are in the middle of a very big economical crisis that appear here. So in a way, the project apparently was um, some kind of uh, yeah, iconic building. But nobody knows that, for example, this building in Poland, I think uh, it's a building, uh, it's a very low expensive building in a way, for example, for a philharmonic. But this is, it doesn't matter for the, for the media, for example. Or for example, in, in the US, the building for sure, because of a traditional, some kind of tradition that uh, there is in America has been very well received. In fact, after that, we had also some other work there because of that. So I think that, uh, in a way, I think it's very, very difficult that uh, the media, uh, how to say, they, they want to see in a project what they want to see, in a way. It's very, very difficult sometimes to have a more wider vision of a, a, a project or also of, of the work of an architect. Uh, recently, for example, we, uh, I went for in the US for some lecture, and in some university they, uh, they introduced our world in following a, uh, a text that has been written in, I don't know, remember, it was the, the New York Times or some other uh, newspaper where they, the title was Return to Boring Architecture. So, in a way, <laughs> no? What's, honestly, in our case, uh, in a way, it's very difficult uh, that uh, the, the, the work you, you try to do is not to categorize in some tendencies. And um, th this is, I think, I think for our experience it's quite, uh, every time there is this kind of, uh, um, yeah, the risk is to have a simplistic vision of architecture in a way. But how it's, not to have a simplistic vision of architecture yeah. in 400 words? I mean, Exa no, either no, you exactly, play the exactly. game or you don't it's play the game. If you want to be in the, in the newspapers, mm -hmm. you have to allow for different views, different... Uh, I mean, there's no other way. There's no other way. And some people, many people, many architects, would feel they benefit from being there. And obviously, you said before you were, you also did benefit it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not excuse for partial views and for errors, obviously not. But, um, you know, I mean, there is an author of the text, and it's not you. You are the author of the, of the building, and you are exposing yourself uh, just in the same way as we, as author of the text, we are exposing to your reviews and to your opinions and to whatever. I mean, that's a fair game, isn't it? There is oh, no sure. way you can control every word that is but it's in there. But it's true that in many architectural magazines, professional, I don't know how to distinguish, but definitely not the daily press. Architects did send their own text and they were published out of what? Out of laziness of the people in the newsrooms, out of uh, lack of um, knowledge, out of whatever. But that's not uh, a newspaper. I mean, you are expected to write your piece, and obviously you are expected to write it well. You may agree, not disagree, and the person writing the piece may do it a very poor job as well. Yeah, yeah. That's part of the risk. That's part of the sure. fact of being... No, in, fact, in fact, for this reason, I think this is this, uh, how to say, this slightly different... In, in a newspaper or in a daily newspaper, establish some kind of, uh, I don't know, trying, using this media for doing some kind of uh, uh, critics, it's quite risky in a way, because the approach that news, the, the, the media can have for speaking about architecture is, in a way, it's very, you know, very limited. It's also to, to, <clears throat> to write in order to uh, present architecture to a general public. That is honestly super difficult. It's really, really difficult to transmit uh, 
why an architecture is a good architecture for and why an architecture is a bad architecture to a larger audience, to a very wider part. This is, I think, is the one of the most uh, difficult thing for, for me as an architect to try and to transmit to everyday people why this building is great and why the other in that part is, is bad. You, ne you never mind that. We will do the job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great, great. So it's, I don't know, I think, and, and, and I don't know, this, this relationship, it's really, uh, in a way, how to say, very, I, I think that the, 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 the most important thing is try to skip the, the tendency that exists in architecture, like in many other professions. No? Hmm. Well, I actually have uh, kind of two questions. One is, um, how do you imagine your readers are? Like, who, who, who are you addressing to special, you know, what do you know about them? Or what do you think you know about them? And uh, if you are aiming to get to a broader audiences than the ones you have, uh, how, how could architecture uh, do that? Yeah, like, uh, that, that's one question. And the other one is, which is the opposite? Is like, which are your sources? How do you get to know about everything what happens in architecture? And how do you get to find the little pieces which might be relevant but small in a corner of coming from a practice which is never sending their you know, uh, works to, to the magazines, for instance? Wait, you have a first idea about that uh, regarding or, or looking at the kind of public your newspaper has. If you are addressing to a reader of the New York Post, you have a kind of reader. If you are addressing to a reader of the New York Times, uh, you have another kind of reader. For a, for a, well, let's say, more or less educated people, so you, you, you have a general idea of who they are. And about the second question, well, it's a matter of time again, because of no, you know you can't reach any interesting building all around the world. You have no money, your paper has no money, and you don't have connections enough as to be aware of everything that's going on. Of course, you have different sources in the net and you have some critics you follow, etc. But most of the times, if they live abroad and they work abroad, you are, you are not all able to go and to reach the place. But if you live in a small community like Barcelona, uh, well, the time passes by and you, you get in touch with uh, many architects and, and Every time you write about them, you, you, well, in my case, I, I tell them, please, if you have any news, please contact me again. So, in a way, it's like a bit of networking. And uh, it's easy to do in Barcelona after some years, in Catalonia as well, and in Spain a bit. If you, I have a look at my, at my agenda, there are, there are a few telephone numbers of people whom I know I can ring if eventually I'm in a situation I have to write for next week and I have no, build, no new building to write about. It's a matter, of, it's a matter of, of time and it's a matter of dealing with architects in the sense of talking with them. And uh, Fabrizio and Alberto know very well that I like to, it was not possible in, in, in his case, really, because uh, when I went to Roa Burgos, I went in a family trip, and when I went to Aguilas, I went with uh, alone, and when I went to Shechin, I went alone as well. But 90% of the times I visit a building, I try to visit with the architect or also with some people who worked in, in his studio. And I think that this is the, the, the most uh, easy way to get a general idea of what the architects were aiming to do. And not less important than that, which were the two or three uh, critical decisions that uh, uh, were so important for the building being at the end what it is and not another thing. And I think that it's a good idea to try to get those two or three main decisions all, all along the, 
or through the, 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 the project, which really make understandable why the building is how it is, and not the other way around. Me, I, I never thought I know everything about all the architecture in the world at all. At all. Of course. I mean, the, the key thing is that you feel well, you feel confident, you feel that whatever you're writing, whatever you choose, has some meaning, may mean something, may point away, whatever. So that's, you know, on the one hand. On the other hand, um, broader audience, yes, uh, my boss would love that, for sure. My biggest hits in architecture have been one on the disasters of famous architects, made number one in my paper, one of the few occasions that architecture has gone that far. Another one was on, the, um, on how architects couldn't live out of architecture, so it was more social. And when you are more social, you have a problem because then you don't belong in culture, you belong in society in another section, so you have to kind of make them see that it's culture still. And the third one was um, on the first sustainable building, not just a single house, like a social building built in Spain. And so perhaps that can summarize a little bit that another shift in the, in the interest of the readers. Uh, Mark Magazine had a rule which was no jargon. Uh, please, and um, their aim was to reach uh, the broadest possible audience. So uh, when I wrote for them, and uh, in general when I write also in other media or, or even on my own blog, I really try to, uh, try to have something for everybody. I know that sounds corny, but uh, you know, I like The Simpsons a lot. Uh, as a program because the script writers are incredibly sharp. They have references for, uh, you know, cultural cognoscenti as well as children. And so everybody can enjoy it. And, um, and that would be the ideal uh, that I, you know, that I would try to, try to achieve. I don't think I'm anywhere near there, but um, as for sources, that's a tough one. It's really hard. Um, because, of course, uh, we want the scoop, right? And we want to be the first ones, uh, uh, you know, to write about a building. I think, actually, that's a very problematic attitude. I'm, I'm, I, I think buildings should be evaluated years after they're completed. You know, how are they holding up? How, how are they being lived in? How are they uh, actually, um, you know, withstanding some a period of time? Um, there's this kind of race. Uh, sometimes when we get tours of buildings, it still smells like wet paint, and, and uh, something's not right about that. Um, but. Yes. If you are asking who, who is the audience of my magazine, of course, uh, we know almost every architect in Poland. Uh, so I think that uh, I really know them, but we also analyze everything. Uh, we use data. Uh, you know that in internet it is possible. Um, so, uh, but I think that it is very important this issue that you said that it is um, that we should come back to some buildings and analyze them in. Uh, the next moment, and uh, that's what we uh, try to do. There are some um, buildings, uh, some places that I think are very, very important. For example, the main uh, square in Warsaw, which is still empty, even if there were a lot of uh, uh, competitions, for example, for the Museum of Modern Art that you know, uh, this story with Keres, and now uh, it was done, uh, the, the tender won by um, Pfeiffer. So we are... Um, uh, writing about this uh, issue year by the year, so it is something like a little archive of uh, Polish uh, architecture, um, and I, I think that it is very useful, not only for that moment, but also to, 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 have, um, to have a history, to have a, a kind of archive. So, <laughs> thank you very much. We were a bit long and now it's uh, dark outside and we can continue tomorrow. Uh, 
from the morning with the panels and in the night. So thank you very much to everybody to come and to the speakers. <laughs>